Hi, Nicole. Why don't you introduce yourself to us? So my name is Nicole Manigo. I'm a first year student at Campbell's Physical Therapy Department. Very nice. And I hear your journey to PT school was a bit different from the average student. Would you like to share more about that? Uh, yeah, I will say that my journey to PT school is not the average. Um, I'm trying to, I'm going to try to keep it short, but I, I did face some challenges, some valleys, some mountains that I, that I do believe is inspirational. Um, I started in high school. I graduated back in 2010. Hopefully that doesn't um, in, share my age too much, but um, I fell in love with rehab through athletic training, um, and that's what led me to East Carolina. From there, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to further my basketball career or something like that. Um, so I fell on to physical therapy um, as a profession. I wasn't too sure what that was because I've never been into PT school or um, didn't know much about it or the profession. So health fitness specialist with a concentration rehabilitation study uh, was the plan. And then after I graduate was to go off to PT school. Um, it wasn't until maybe my senior year in college of my bachelor's where um, I expressed that I want to be a physical therapist to one of my professors and he asked me my GPA and I said a three four and he just kind of completely was like well that's not competitive enough there's no way you're going to get in and so you know I was devastated at that point um, so as soon as I graduated I said you know the, what are the things that I needed to do to get into physical therapy school um, apparently it was to get my GPA up take the GRE and complete some shadowing hours uh, which was a little hard with me working part-time on the weekends. Um, so I decided to go into therapeutic massage, uh, get an associate degree in that, and hopefully that would help me with the, the broad, or the specific band of anatomy. Um, and then I picked up a second part-time job because I needed to work. Um, during that time, my car broke down. Um, and for about a year, my second year into massage therapy school, I had to ride a bike um, to and from school and then to and from work and then from work home. So um, I remember getting up at 530 in the morning, getting to the bus stop, putting my bike on the bus rack, getting to school, riding my bike. Um, and there was this one particular moment where I woke up at 530 in the morning, got to the bus stop and it was raining, completely pouring down rain. The bus pulls up and there is already two bikes on the bike rack. So from there, um, I had to ride my bike six miles to school in the rain around 5.45, 45, 6 o'clock in the morning. And it was a humbling experience, but right then and there, I knew that no one else was going to pedal my way to success. Um, so, you know, perseverance, motivation, determination, from that moment on, I had to go get it. Um, didn't get my car fixed for a year. You know, graduated with a 4.0 out of that associate's program. Congratulations. Thank you so much, so much. Um, it opened my eyes to the in, the in depth of anatomy and I, and I fell in love with rehab through manual therapy um, through those two degrees. Meanwhile, I, you know, I was working at Lowe's part time on the weekends, but I also uh, picked up recreation management and I was working my way through recreation management and I became a supervisor um, of my of a facility for Greenville Recreation and Park. Um, through that I developed a sense of community that I never knew I needed, um, leadership skills, um, professional development, like all of that. Uh, when I finally got into physical therapy school it was my mom's birthday. She turned 65. Um, it was the championship night of a uh, winter youth basketball that was open to about 300 kids. And I was hosting it, and all parents and all these things. And we had a, a um, we got a scholarship. It was a $10,000 scholarship all on the same day that Miss Sherry called me and said that I was accepted into physical therapy school. So, um, I had to go back to school, get my GPA up, take the GRE over, um, go through so many different programs. And at this point, I'm 30. You know, my my grades were going to expire within six months. And so I'm standing in Walmart and she calls me and she tells me that. And it, it just all goes into fruition where 
I now all have, I have all these skill sets now. You know, the story wasn't great, obviously, um, but through perseverance, determination, just working at that, you can sit here um, and become a physical therapist. If I can do it, right, um, anybody should be able to do it. And as far as finally sitting in that PT chair, what does that mean to you? How does it feel to be here on the third floor at Smith Hall, living your dream? It's, it's unrealistic. Um, it's, it's crazy. Like I said, from 2010, where someone told me that, you know, you need to be better to be a PT, um, to going through that. You know, I had a t almost eight to 10 year career in recreation management and, um, working in a low income community. And then like all that that's taught me, all these things are going into my backpack, going into my backpack and to be able to bring it all together is it's mind blowing. Um, right now I own a house in Greenville, North Carolina still. So I commute daily an hour and a half here and back. And it's all because this is what I want to do. I, I gave away a really good career with really good money because I have a passion for this. Um, and so to have the opportunity with all this orange behind me who, who believes the same thing, you know, um, I'm faith driven to be able to give back service um, and do it wearing orange. I, I couldn't be any more grateful. That is amazing. Thank you for sharing your heart with us. So now that your backpack is filling up with all this PT goodness, what do you see as your dream job after PT school? I don't want to give out two secrets, because too many secrets, because you know, I don't want anybody to take it from me. <laughs> um, but there was a time where I was getting my shadowing hours at Vidant, which is now ECU Health, and I was, you know, after finished folding towels, you know what you do as shadowing hours. I kind of wandered into their um, aquatic area. And so I'm sitting beside this heated pool and I, and I watched this um, younger woman roll herself in her wheelchair to the hoist. She puts herself in the hoist and lowers herself in the pool and just begins to swim and start standing. And so that was mind blowing to me to see some, you know, some fragile legs be able to stand up in the ways of the water. So that was a really solidifying moment for me. In my PT journey. So to answer your question, my dream job would first off be go back to that hospital and work with the PTs that, you know, gave me my recommendations, who saw, sought out so highly in me and to uh, take up a specialty in aquatic therapy. So, um, and then that's right in the community that I currently referee basketball in that I've become so attached to. So to be able to still be in the community, but um, to hand in hand with that with aquatic therapy. That's beautiful. I love that. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today.